I want you to really think about what happens when you do start praying in tongues because tongues have different rivers and it has different things that it, it is supposed to um, bring you into a focus on certain things. So when you're in the river of tongues, sometimes your tongues is signifying a department of your life for relationships. When you're praying in tongues and the mystery of those tongues is relationships, God is pinpointing people that either you're about to meet, you have already met, but you're supposed to unmeet. And then there's also a revelation of who is called to give you meat. Let me show you something. Elisha, he meets his parents, but he has to unmeet his parents. Then he is being taught who is giving him meat, which is Elijah. So I'm just giving you an example. When, when tongues are in the direction of relationships, it deals with who you're going to meet, who you have already met that you're supposed to unmeet, and it deals with who is called to give you meat. Um, so uh, when I say meet, uh, meeting people, I'm talking about M-E-E-T, but one that's giving you meat, I'm talking about M-E-A-T, which is the doctrines of God. Then there's a direction of tongues that deal with your sexuality. The mystery of keeping yourself pure. Avoiding sexual sin. There's a dimension in tongues that deal directly with your sexuality, your thought life. As a woman, you could start thinking about other women. As a man, you could start thinking about other men. There is an anointing in thoughts through tongues that transfers the brain of God to you about your sexuality. That even if the spirit does not have you in no sexual, sexual activity, you'll receive a new grace to agree with him. So now you're dealing with the tongues of sexuality. There is a mystery of how to come out of homosexuality. There's a mystery of how to come out of lesbianism. And the spirit of God has a different technique for everybody. Everybody's deliverance is in a quality time that you'll spend with the Lord. That's sacrificial that goes against your feelings and your emotions because your body is going to want to move. It's going to want to talk. It's going to want to eat. It's going to want to engage in something. The reason why our generation is so dangerous in blindness is because the generation has so much entertainment that the world offers. And we don't have prophetic parents to even keep the children away from those entertainments. The first thing that a, a, a parent does now when they have a child is give their child a phone. They used to give their child a pacifier. Back in the day, they used to give them uh, a bop bop. But now, parents give their children this. When we were growing up, we did not have this as little children. At seven, we didn't have this. At eight, we didn't have this. At four, we didn't have this. But children are receiving this at two years old, one years old, three years old, six months years old. Think about that. Six months. 
These things are not good. They're toxic. This is the first thing a child should learn. Did you know that this is more important than one, two, three? And say your name. This is more important. Because how many people that know how to count to a thousand are burning in the lake of fire right now? So what really is education? How many people that know how to speak big compound words with many syllables, they're in the bottomless pit right now falling at lightning speed nonstop? How many people are boiling in the lake of fire right now that knows multiplication and addition and subtraction? They know geometry. They know science. They know history, but they are burning in the lake of fire. So what really is education? Education is in tongues. Legazi viano curanzo. Nendre zila anzele konunzilin. Wendre liva azolo vokovi azolonos. Tongues is the educational system of God. When you pray in tongues, you're being educated about what was complex, it was complicated, it was perplexing, it was difficult to comprehend. You are training your brain to swallow the stake of God. When you pray in tongues, now saints, I want you to catch this in Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they saw tongues as fire. Saints, you didn't get it and many preachers didn't get it. They saw tongues. Before they spoke in tongues, they saw fire come in the appearance of tongues in front of them. They saw tongues. Tongues could be seen. Remember I told you that new tongues? You'll hear it in your mind. You'll hear the syllables. You'll hear the phrases. You'll hear yourself saying something in prayer. They saw the tongues. You're not listening to me in here. Those apostles, those 120 plus people, they saw tongues in front of them. The spirit of God opened up their eyes to see tongues. And as they spoke in those tongues that they saw, fire sat on them. So saints, think about this. You need the fire of God to break free from addictions. You need the fire of God to break a routine that's destroying you. You need the fire of God to destroy thoughts that's deceiving you, conversations that's corrupting you, mindsets that's depleting you, concepts that is, is, is making you delusional. You need fire to burn up things that make you God's enemy. But how did they hear from God? How did they step into God? How do I hear the voice of God? The voice of God is patience. 